All right. Bernard Hopkins is saying Canelo Alvarez is making history with the fight with Sergey Kovalev. And you know I ain't happy about none of this history talk with a Kovalev-Canelo fight. Uh, But Bernard Hopkins is making a valid point, but I hope he's not making another point that Canelo tried to make. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. Thank you guys for your support and encouragement on uh, by listening to the video all the way through and commenting in the comment section. Share the video, like the video, please. Also, thank you to everybody that attends the live streams that we do uh, through the week and also our special show on Sunday, OG Boxing Talk with myself, Blood Boxing, KQKC, and Curtis Anderson. And also thank you to everybody that supports on the Patreon for non business and politics, Bernard Hopkins. One of the best fighters, one of my favorite fighters, top top 10 of my favorite fighters, Bernard Hopkins. Gritty, man, long reigning welterweight champ, a long reigning uh, middleweight champion, and somebody that, you know, I was really rooting, I was really upset about one of, about a subject that was related to him not too long ago before the Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin fight. And that was that there was this media campaign pushing this false, this fake record about Gennady Golovkin. And now we see involving the sa- involving one of the same people, Canelo Alvarez being uh, being associated with a fake record that is related to Henry Armstrong. So when Bernard Hopkins when Bernard Hopkins said that that you know that this is historic, I'm hoping he's not referring in part to Canelo Alvarez holding three three championship belts simultaneously, right? Which means at the same time, something that has not happened since 1938 with Henry Armstrong. Please, Bernard Hopkins, don't be talking about that because that is no different than what they were doing to you with Gennady Golovkin having 22 major championship, uh, 22 middleweight title defenses and trying to take your record and and having given him credit for having tied it. Because that Gennady Golovkin record was fake. This Canelo Alvarez comparison, if he wins against, uh, against Sergey Kovalev, is just as fake. And it is just as fake as Tyson Fury's lineal championship. Giving Tyson Fury credit for doing things that Ali did, things that Joe Frazier did, Joe Frazier did, or George Foreman did, or Jack Johnson did, and being in the line of those champions, which is not true. The media are in the business. Boxing media is really should be called outsource boxing marketing. That's what it should be called because that is what they're engaged in. They're engaged in a market. They are market fighters for promoters. They, the promoter and the media together come up with a narrative that will make a fighter seem larger than life or bigger than the moment. They become historic they become the greatest, one of the greatest ever. You and they create this, they try to create this sense that you are in so you are witnessing something special, something that is rare, and something worth paying them money for. That is what that is my observation for why they make up these fake records, these ESPN records. Oh, there's this boxing mat, there's a basketball game going on. And Stephen Curry, his five threes, his five threes in the first two minutes of of the third quarter. And all of a sudden, it's a record. Never before in the history of basketball has someone hit five threes in the first two minutes and 32 seconds of the third quarter of a of a of a conference final in a game between, right? 
Golden State Warriors and Houston Ryan, the Houston Rockets. Has anybody ever been keeping track of that? That's an ESPN record, right? What they're doing with this, with what they did with Gennady Golovkin was Gennady Golovkin had a minor belt called the WBA regular. He was not the WBA champion. That was Felix Sturm. So for about 11 fights, I do believe, he held a belt called the WBA regular. WBA regular is not the champion of the WBA. The WBA super is. After about 11 fights as the WBA regular, and somebody can check those specific numbers, right? He became the WBA super. And then he became the IBF, and then he became the WBC, right? But they counted from him having a secondary title. The number of ti title defenses for Gennady Golovkin ended in, I think his last one was nine, which is a long title reign for major championship fights. It is. It's nine. That ain't bad at all. A lot of champions don't make it to nine. But he didn't make it to 22, like Bernard Hopkins did with the IBF. He was the only champion, and that was the only champ that was the only championship belt for 22 fights. But because HBO was trying to sell Gennady Golovkin as this monster that was ducked, and he's the greatest, one of the greatest middleweights ever, they confused those two things. That's what's happening with Canelo Alvarez and Archie. Excuse me, not Archie Moore. If I said Archie Moore, forgive me. I mean Henry Armstrong. Henry Armstrong held three championships simultaneously in 1938. The featherweight championship, the welterweight championship, excuse me, the featherweight, the lightweight, and the, and the welterweight championship, and he fought for a fourth, which was the middleweight. <laughs> and he won them all in 1938. That is nothing. That is not what Canelo's doing. Canelo won a 160-pound belt two years ago. In, well, the year before last, uh, in 2017 against Gennady Golovkin. In 2018, he won a secondary 168-pound belt with Rocky Fielding. He is not the 168-pound champion. That's not a belt at all. And now in 2019, he would fight... 2019, he would fight Sergey Kovalev for the 175 pound title. Note, that's two major championships that he won over a course of two years the 160 and the 175, if he won. Now, him moving up in weight is a good thing, but the problem here also is that Henry Armstrong was the only champion in those weight divisions. There was one champion at the time. Henry Armstrong and Henry Armstrong alone. At 160 pounds, Canelo Alvarez wasn't, isn't the only 160 pound champion. There are three others. By the time he fights uh, Sergey Kovalev, there'll be three others. There's going to be Andre. There's going to be Andra, Andrade, Demetrius Andre, Jamal Charlo, and the winner of Sergey Devranchenko and Gennady Golovkin, and he's the fourth. Also, there's three. I do believe there's three other champions at 175: Wojciech, Baturbiev, and uh, and Bivol. He's one of four champions, which should mean, if you compare the two, that he would be like a he would be ranked in the 175 pound division and ranked in the 160 pound division because there's four champions. They can't all be the champion. They're just title holders. Not just title holders, but they're title holders. That's not what, that is not what our, uh, Henry Armstrong did. It's not close to what Henry Armstrong did. The only thing that they have in common is the fact that this is taking place in multiple weight divisions. And also, let's get it right. There was only, th there was only eight weight divisions when Henry Armstrong was fighting. So there was no in-between weight like 168. So not only is Canelo Alvarez not a champion at 168, the 168-pound champions are, uh, at the moment, Andre Durrell. Andre Durrell, I don't believe, I don't know who fought for uh, 
who's fought for um Ramirez's uh Zerto Ramirez's belt. Uh Callum Smith, uh Callum Smith at 160 and Callum Smith at 168. He's not even a champion at 168. So it's again, this is more media stuff related to using the history of boxing in some real flimsy comparison to create a, a sense of grandeur and and his and historical relevance to a fight that for for what it actually is is a is a title holder at 175 that has been knocked out two of his last five fights right with body shots and and Canelo Alvarez moving up and taking a chance of fighting a bigger guy, right? So there is credit to be given to Canelo Alvarez for moving up that far in weight, but not the type of credit where you need to be comparing him to, to, to Henry Armstrong. Henry Armstrong did something that was historic. And, and by the way, Henry Armstrong is the only one to ever to do that as far as I know. So simultaneously hold three belts in the same weight division and in the same year. And def- and by the way, he fought 19 times that year and he defended each one of the belts. He didn't grab the belt and dip back down. But if Canelo was willing to dip back down to 160, go to 175 and come back to 160 and go back to 175, then he'll be defended between two weight classes. But he's still not the only champion. How about you clean out your weight? How about you start where where? where uh, Henry Armstrong started by becoming an undisputed and the only champion in, in at featherweight, right? And then going up from 133 up to welterweight. Winning welter, welterweight title, I think he won that against, I think he might've won that against Barney Ross. And then, then move back down um, to win, to fight at lightweight. That is not what Canelo Alvarez is doing. It's not a fair representation of what's going on and it's I hope that's what not what Bernard Hopkins talking about when he's talking about the history of it, because he does have because he did mention that, you know, it's tough to move from 160 to 175. That's without a doubt. But at the same time, that's been done because Bernard Hopkins did it. Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr. has did it. Uh, James Tony didn't get a 168 pound title, but he got a heavyweight, he got a secondary heavyweight belt. So it's not it's not unheard of and it's not a feat on the level of a Henry Armstrong and what he did in 1938. Let me know what you think in the comment section with that. I'm out.